Welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast on the SalesCast Network. You've joined a global movement of sales professionals who are dedicated to being authentic and building trust. We call it Selling from the Heart. Together, we are on a mission to bring sincerity and substance to the sales profession we all love. Get ready to be inspired and equipped as we join our hosts, Larry Levine and Daryl Amy. Larry here. Unleash your business potential with Work Better Now. Get access to top-notch, full-time remote talent that delivers results from day one. Say goodbye to tedious admin tasks and time-consuming hiring. Whether you need an executive assistant, want to grow your team, or simply want to free up your time so you can sell more, Work Better Now has got you covered. They're carefully vetted and matched remote workforce will streamline your operations. Join Daryl and I in experiencing the positive impact of Work Better Now. Our assistant, Carmen, has been with us for almost two years, and she has been a tremendous benefit to our team. Book a free consultation at workbetternow.com and transform your business today. Use promo code HEART to receive $150 off for your first three months. Hello, and welcome back to Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host, Daryl Amy, here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? Hey, Daryl, where should I start? We have, here we are, we're just kicking off the summer. We have all kinds of things going on here at Selling from the Heart. I am just absolutely excited to be here. Summer is hot. It's fun. It's selling from the heart. We're keeping you focused. We're keeping you on fire. And this is going to be an incredible episode. We've got our friend Mark Clausen here. Just get ready to be coached by the master coach. It is going to be a, a fantastic day here at Selling from the Heart. And it's always a good day at Selling from the Heart, Larry, because of the incredible community of sales leaders and sales professionals from all over the world who say, yes, I want to sell from the heart. Uh, I just want to give a special shout out to a near and dear friend of ours. What an incredible leader. What an incredible coach for his people. Kevin Hambrice, as a CEO of a company, this guy walks, talks, lives, and breathes a servant lifestyle. Kevin, we appreciate you. Tip of the hat, Kevin, and the way you're leading your organization is inspirational and totally incredible. Absolutely love it. And I love what's going on here at Selling from the Heart as we get ready to dive into this conversation. Also love that Selling from the Heart has been picked up by a New York publisher. It's being re-released on August 15th. And I want to say a huge thank you to every one of you that's gone to barnesandnoble.com to grab a pre-release copy. And I also want to let you know, you can get up to $300 in bonus items when you pre-order that book. Why are we asking to do it? Because we want this movement to spread and grow. And if we can get some momentum online, we can get this thing on the shelf in 650 stores. And that means more people selling from the heart. Larry, congratulations. Such an exciting Uh, time. It is. And I I keep going back and I go, man, what would have happened if I didn't convince you to start a podcast with me, Daryl, <laughs> oh, what would happen if I didn't convince you to sit down and write that book? <laughs> oh, hey, go good. to sellingfromtheheart.net slash pre-order. Thank you to everybody that's doing that. If you go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash pre-order, you'll get a link to the book on barnesandnoble.com and a way to get your hands on the $300 in bonus items. Well, we have a great guest today. Mark Clausen coaches 18,000 sellers and 1,200 first-line sales managers as a global sales and sales performance and strategy coach at IBM. His mission, come alongside and coach up every IBM seller and sales leader, elevating the way they work, think, and execute with excellence. Mark works to create trusted spaces where people can be transparent and honest in an encouraging environment. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the Selling from the Heart studios, our friend, Mark Clausen. Mark, welcome to Selling from the Heart. Larry, Daryl, thanks so much for having me on. I count it a pleasure. I have uh, uh, been following Larry for, uh, man, I don't know, I suppose 12 or 18 months when I first stumbled on to yeah. Selling from the Heart. And it's exciting to join you guys today. No, it's just been, it's so cool to have you and and it's just been a treat to get to know you. So thanks for hanging out with us today. Hey, yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. 
We're going to have a phenomenal conversation as we get it started. Mark, you know the question that every guest in the Selling from the Heart podcast answers, and that is, what does it mean to you, Mark, to sell from the heart? Well, you know, guys, um, uh, for a long time, I've been teaching four things. Know, be known, serve, and solve. And I think you sell from the heart when you know the customer. I think you sell from the heart when they know you and you've got integrity and the kind of man or woman you are when you show up in their environment. I think you sell from the heart when you seek to understand their agenda and you uh, work to collaborate with them. And I think you sell from the heart when you help them solve, because then you've moved them along the buyer's journey, not your seller's journey. And it certainly is selling and and serving from the heart. It it all gets wrapped around Larry's message in his book. And uh, uh, I've taken that to heart. And that's what I share with IBMers. Oh, I did. I I totally respect is what you just said. It's just, there's so much gold there, but it's all about serving. And it's, and to me, it's just hard to serve when it's all about me, but it's easy to serve when it's all about we. And that's what I just love about your message, Mark, and how you coach your sellers. Um, It's, uh, you know, it's interesting. We've got new, new young sellers coming out of our global sales school. We have some people moving in from outside of sales into sales for the first time. And I've got technical architects that have been the, the, the rock stars of the technical environment to talk about quantum or our new Watson X components. But they say, well, I, I don't know how to sell. And I said, well, stop. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean stop? You know, some of the sales managers are coming at me with both of them, right? But the whole idea is what happens when you serve? Mm. And I asked the question of every one of the senior leaders that asked me that question. I said, so tell me a story about a time you loved being sold to. Maybe a timeshare, maybe a car, maybe something. (laughs) Is there a single great story you've told 10 friends about being sold to? And they get really, really quiet. (laughs) And then I'll ask the question. So tell me about a buying experience where a consultative salesperson wanted to understand what your needs were and what you were trying to solve for and the challenges you had and the, the budget that you had or whatever, and led you through a buying journey that helped you choose just the right thing. Tell me a story about that. Mm. And they could talk all afternoon. Beautiful. And this, this heart of service and the parallels between being a servant and uh, being a sales, the difference we talk about it selling from the heart all the time, the difference between a sales rep Someone's got it on their card and a true sales professional is that heart of service. Absolutely love it. Well, Mark, you are a a global uh, thought leader when it comes to coaching in sales. And this is something at Selling from the Heart, we're extremely passionate about um, the importance of coaching. And uh, there's so many different ways we could start this conversation. But I just want to ask you, Let's let's just look at the dark side for a minute. Where do most sales leaders just fumble the ball and get this wrong uh, when it comes to how they lead their teams? You know, uh, Daryl, that's a great question. Uh, I, I think you have to go back and ask, how are we enabling sales managers to do their job? Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you know, there's no classes on sales or sales management in high school. I don't think there's very many colleges where you get a four year degree in sales or sales management. Mm-hmm. I, I think what we do is we promote good sales reps into being sales managers. Mm-hmm. And th- it ends up being um, they repeat the same things based on the mentors, coaches or managers they had. You know, they take the best, they leave the rest. I, I think one of the mistakes that uh, a lot of sales managers make is they do really great cadence calls. They know how to inspect. Well, who's the buyer? What's the budget? When's it going to close? Uh, who's your competition? What's their thing look like? And uh, sales reps feel beat up quite often mm-hmm. as they get into the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year, and they're trying to deliver their sales plan. Um, so I, I would say coaching isn't something that comes naturally, <laughs> just like my golf swing. You know, <laughs> it was it was bad. You know, or, or even a better example is snowboarding because. You know, I, I can wakeboard, but getting on snow, you know, I, I crash and burn a number of times. And I think they're sales managers that crash and burn because they've never been given a framework of how to coach. 
Mm. And uh, I, th- I think that's a big miss in a lot of our companies today. And I think there's some great things that sales managers could learn to uh, coach effectively. So, so here's what's, here's what's interesting. I, I'll just, I'm going to throw my hands up and Daryl already knows this. Uh, I was promoted. So I was one of the top sellers in my company. And as our company started to expand, I was kind of volun- voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you go down to right? And we we grew, I grew up in Southern California, so you can go. Can you go into Los Angeles as we open this office? Can you be the sales manager in that office? Absolute worst year experience I ever had because I was used to coaching and managing myself and mm-hmm. doing certain things as a top sales professional. Mm-hmm. But what I soon realized is the things that made me successful and how I held myself accountable. Some of it didn't translate into the sales team. And after a year, Mark, I bowed out. I said, I threw in the towel. I said, I get me out of here. Just exit stage right as fast as possible. Because I wasn't given, right? I wasn't provided the tools, nor was I groomed to say, here's how we're going to coach you for the next six months to a year as we transition you into this position. Right, right. That's uh, that's great advice. So you decided to write a book instead. <laughs> <laughs> and the book is off the charts. So thank goodness that you didn't make it as a sales manager. Oh, you know man. My guess is, Larry, is that those insights, that experience, the yeah. pain you went through, you pour that into selling from the heart. There's mm-hmm. a lot of those stories in there that you talk about. You know, I, I think uh, to build on the, the where are sales managers getting it wrong, Sometimes we are advice monsters. I think mm. you can write a whole chapter in a book about advice monsters. Other people have talked about that before. It's so easy for, at least for me as a man, to be able to come back and, you know, I've got two daughters and five grandkids and, and they come up and, and uh, how should we do this? Or I've got this problem and I jump right into helping them solve. I've been there before. Yeah. I know what to do. <laughs> and I tell them. And as soon as you as a manager start catching yourself telling I think you should go meet with this person. I think you should look at this thing. I think you should. All of a sudden, you you stripped away all the power from your reps and their ability to learn and think for themselves. You're giving them a fish instead of teaching Mm. them to fish. And there's some great opportunities in there. Larry, have you heard about the GROW model before in coaching? No, no, can't say I have. It's worth your your, your listeners to grab onto because it's so simple. And my guess is there's a lot of these elements in your book, but in the G in grow, and this is a a global thing. This isn't an IBM deal, but the G is goal. You know, as a coach, Larry, what, what goal, what are you trying to solve for? Where's your pain point? And you let your salesperson express their goal or what they're trying to accomplish. You know, I'm trying to sell 500 of these into this account. Okay. Mm -hmm. The R is the recurrent reality. And as a coach, then I can say, Larry, tell me a little bit about where you're at, who you met with. Tell me your current reality, the Mm -hmm. kinds of things that are going on. That's coaching. Now, all I did was ask really great open-ended questions. The O is options. What options have you considered? What have you tried? What else are you thinking about? What else? What else? What else? And, And you're really spurring the imagination of your sellers as they're starting to think about options. And options help a seller show up from the heart because now they have to think about that, not from their perspective, but from the customer's perspective. And the W is a sales manager's power club because it's will or way forward. So, Larry, what are you going to do? What's your plan? You came up with five or six really great ideas. Why don't you prioritize those and tell me what your first, second and third are? And then when we get together next week, you share me the share with me the progress that you made and um, kind of what you've learned. Now, that GROW model, super easy to memorize, great little acronym. Uh, But I'll tell you what, that can take you from being an advice monster to a coach in four easy letters. Wow. Incredibly powerful. And if you think about it as a sales professional, you don't walk into a selling situation and go, here's what you need to do. (laughs) Boom, boom, boom. If you do that, you're not going to be very successful. Yet, as soon as we get manager on our business card, we think, okay, now here, you know, here we go. We're the dispenser of advice, wisdom, and uh, marching orders. Well, and some of that, Daryl, you're spot on because we teach. I've got one of these for you. It's got a swivel top. It's got a finger hole. It's got a flippy top. Tell me the pen. It's solid. You can drop it. It lasts in the desert forever. 
Yes. Uh, we teach feature functions and benefits, but we rarely mm. help selling teams understand the value of what it is and, and why it make, matters to the customer. Even your pen, and you've seen those examples before, yeah. it's, you know, sell me the pen. Um, you know, it, it really helps when you think about it through the lenses of the customer's eyes. Mm, that's so good. Well, this is an incredible conversation. And as we're getting ready to pause for a word from our sponsor and to hear from um, our good friend, Garland Vance, about what it means to sell from the heart, I want everyone to get that pen and notepad because I have a feeling we're, but there's some writer downers have already happened. <laughs> writer down. Hey, that's uh, a good one. Writer yeah, down. Writer down. That's right. That's right. We're getting coached by the master coach here. So let's take a brief break and we're going to hear from former podcast guests and our, Gar our friend, Garland Vance author of How to Get Unstuck, about what it means to him to sell from the heart after a word from our sponsors. Daryl here, and I'm excited to announce that Larry's book, Selling from the Heart, has been picked up by a New York publishing house and is now available for pre-order on the barnesandnoble.com website. The movement of authenticity is gaining momentum, and it would be beneficial to have the book available not just online, but also on the shelves of Barnes & Noble stores. To make this a possibility, we would like to get pre-orders for as many copies of Selling from the Heart as possible in order to demonstrate the book's popularity. So those who pre-order the book on barnesandnoble.com are going to receive over $250 in special bonus items as a token of our gratitude for supporting this huge goal. To show your support, pre-order Selling from the Heart on barnesandnoble.com and then go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash book to get access to your special bonus items. We are so grateful for your support as we continue to build this movement of authenticity in the sales profession we all love. For me, to sell from the heart means that I care about the products and services that I offer, and I care about the customers who I'm selling to, and I believe that those two things can benefit each other, that those products and services can benefit that customer's life, and that as a result of that, that it makes other people's lives better as well. Yeah. <laughs> I love Garland. What a, and what, a, what an appropriate uh, piece of advice here, perspective on this is, is being able to truly care, and I think caring about your clients is critical, but it's also caring about the people from a leadership perspective, the people that are on your team. You know, I, I think as a, a seller, you've got your customer to care for, mm -hmm. and you also have your first line sales manager who you report to to care for. Mm. And then when you're in that position, kind of in between, you're sandwiched between demands from your boss and demands from your customer, you have a chance to serve up both ways. And you can do that with a lot of heart. Uh, I think selling is serving from the heart when you think about what are the pressures my boss is under as a sales manager? What's his goals? What does his leadership team expect from him? And how can you rise to the challenge? How can you be uh, maybe one of the strongest people on the teams as you take a look at how you serve up in terms of uh, helping your manager? And as you look back at your client out the other set, through the other set of lenses, it's really helping understand their business and technology initiatives, the, the, where they're at competitively, uh, what problem they're trying to solve, and then how you can help them get to their goals faster. And when you do that, uh, with the customer always in mind, you know, the content that's inside of Selling from the Heart comes into play, man, every day. Oh, yeah. I, as, as I was listening to what you're saying, I, I want to maybe take this in a, it's still in that serving direction, but as I'm sitting here listening, this is what's racing through my head. And I'd be curious your thoughts, Mark, on this. As we talk about serving, salespeople must serve their clients and they must serve them in a very caring way. But let's just take this one step in the other direction is sales leaders must serve their sales team. So as, as, just spend a few minutes in coaching our listeners who are watching this going, what, do, what does a good sales leader, a good sales manager, when they're serving their sales team, what's that look like? Describe, describe in through Mark's lens, what a serving sales leader looks like when they're serving their sales team. Because mm -hmm. I believe this translates right into how their sales team takes it out into the field. Yeah, you know, I think you're right, Larry. Um I think it starts with your personal relationship with each one of your sellers. 
um, I've been coaching up our managers around the world on conducting effective one-on-ones. And I, I think they do it kind of nonchalant. They think they do it, but they don't really have a formula for it. And what happens when I say, hey, Larry, how was the barbecue? You were going to do that brisket on your Traeger. Uh, how'd that turn out? At the beginning of the one-on-one, I'm, I'm yeah. establishing rapport. I know you. How's, how's, how's Lucy and, and the wife and whatever? I'm connected to you personally. And we start by warming up the conversation. Uh, the second part is tell me what you're reading and what you're learning. Because Mm -hmm. I want you to know that every time we get together, I'm going to ask you about what you're learning, what you're growing in. Inside of IBM, we have what we call Think 40, 40 hours of internal continuing education. Most of us get 200 plus. I want to know what you're, how are you gaining additional eminence? We all know that Larry reads a book a week, maybe more. You see, I got a couple on the show. (laughs) And and there's dog years and I've written in all of them. Um, But I'd like to know what you're learning. How are you building your technical eminence in the field of domain Mm -hmm. and and how are you building your sales chops, your sales eminence, your skills that go along with that or your industry expertise. You know, the third piece is I'd like to know how you're meeting new people. How are you leveraging social selling uh, in LinkedIn and other matters? Uh, How are you going about leveraging uh, referrals and so on to start to fill that pipeline from the beginning? So talk to me just a little bit about how you're building uh, new relationships that is going to equate into filling your top of the funnel with new opportunities. Then mm-hmm. I'd ask you to walk through two or three of your key opportunities at a fairly deep level. We've got some tools we use to do that, uh, but I want to hold reps accountable in a very coaching like format to understand where they're going. And then I'd always close with, how can I help you? And when you start to follow that, we build a personal relationship in the beginning I asked you how you're growing personally, how you're growing your pipeline. Show me a couple you're going to bring in in the month or the quarter. And then how can I help you be successful? Now I'm a coach. Mm-hmm. That was just a master class right there. <laughs> I'll lead a one-on-one. <laughs> and and I, I love that. And I want to dig into that deeper. But first, I want to go back to something you said just a few minutes ago. And this was from the perspective of a sales rep or sales professional. Um I want to let, and Larry's told his sales leadership story, a very similar sales leadership story for every sales professional listening in two things. First of all, being a sales leader is hard (laughs) and and it's lonely and it is, you're like stretched in a lot of different directions. So I want to, I want to encourage sales professionals listening in, love your sales leader, let him coach you, let her coach you like, play along in, with serious, like get, get engaged and, and help them out whenever you can. Um, uh, because it is a really, really hard and challenging job. Um, and I think there's something, I don't think we've ever said that before on selling from the heart, but we challenge sales professionals all the time to serve their clients, but look, you know, mm-hmm. look up the org chart as well. Um, and go, how can, you know, how can I be of service to the sales leader? Um, and yeah, Mark, I, I don't think we've ever said this out loud on selling from the heart, <laughs> but I know the heart of sales professionals and maybe you can expand on this. How can a sales professional that's listening in be more coachable? <laughs> we know how they, we know how they uh, cannot be coachable. Cause I, I think I've definitely been that, that person, but how can sales professionals be more coachable and actually receive and take advantage of, of coaching? Wow, that's a that's a loaded <laughs> question. Well, uh, that's terrific. You know, there's a lot of personality types, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you've heard of wild ducks, and uh, I read a book to my kids that had lions, beavers, otters, and golden retrievers. <laughs> uh, you know, the lions, the the take charge type A. We've worked for them all before. The beaver is everything's organized, measure twice, cut once. Everything's in alphabetical order, color sequence. Um, the otter is the life of the party and an otter on a sales team is a pain in the behind. <laughs> they'd rather be eating the cake, sliding down the hill. than uh, <laughs> and The gold retriever is loyal, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. You know, they're the boy scout, the girl scout, they're baking the cakes for somebody that's sick and so on. And you have all of those personality types on your team and sellers, you identify with one of those, you're laughing about that crazy story, but you'll tell that to somebody else. But you know, if you're going to be, coachable. Uh, Some of it is you have to help your manager 
do coaching by mm-hmm. seeking out their counsel, asking them for advice. And we just talked about the advice manager being bad, but I think you can get more coaching if you're really well prepared. Yeah. If you know you're working mm-hmm. on a qualified opportunity and you've you've really qualified it well and you've answered all the questions. Uh, if you really know who the buying committee is and you show up prepared knowing who's in legal, who's in procurement, who's in supply chain, who's the end user, who's our competition, who are they counting on to win? What's your value proposition? How do we differentiate? I mean, that's stuff you got to know. Now, you will allow your sales manager to be more coachable when you show up full of insights with a plan. You understand where your gaps are with regards to whether it's politics or relationships or the competition or your value proposition. Mm -hmm. Um, When you know where your vulnerabilities are and you come to your manager and tell them what you're going to do next, you'll give him an opportunity to coach instead of inspect because he doesn't have to ask any questions because you've already asked him of yourself. You know, th- this is this is good. So, hey, Daryl, as I'm listening to what Mark was just saying, we, I just had a past podcast guest just flash before my eyes. And that was Paul Caffrey. So, Mark, Paul Caffrey is the author of the work before the work that he co-authored with Phil M. Jones. And as I started listening, what you're saying is a sales professional, if we just play on the work before the work, a great sales professional is going to do the work before the work or the right. work before the meeting with their sales leader. Let me tell you the work that I've done mm-hmm. thus far. What I'm learning, what I'm, what reading, I'm learning, how exactly. I'm building relationships. Exactly. Mm. Right, right. You know, we use some software inside of IBM from a company called Revenue Storm, uh, probably one of the, the best pieces of software we've integrated into our CRM deployment. And uh, it it focuses on a series of questions that help a seller uh, answer, should we sell and can we sell in a deal? So it helps with qualification. There's one that's all about relationships. Who are the people on the buying committee? How are they going to buy? What's the depth of our relationships with them? Are they a a partner ally or a champion for us? Uh, Are they a supporter? You know, they support us, but they're not going to put their job at risk to make a decision on behalf. Are they neutral? Are they a detractor? Or we don't even know them yet. Mm-hmm. But you got to know who all the people are that are going to be in the decision making committee, understand their business goals as well as their personal imperatives. Because everybody, every one of these people has a personal thing that would make them want to choose you or your solution or your product, whatever it is. And then the last piece is what we call a pursuit profiler. And it looks at an opportunity through six lenses. And it's a beautiful thing when you answer three or four questions. So, Around If you take, just take the value proposition for a minute, if you're trying to sell whatever it is, did you co-create that value proposition and validate it with a client so mm. that you know that it achieves their financial or operational metrics? Has somebody at the company reviewed your ROI to validate that those numbers hunt, that it really is real? And do you have somebody inside of the company in your buying group that has looked at you and said, I think you're the right solution. You've got it all right. Uh, I believe your metrics and um, uh, I'm a champion for you. I'm going to go to bat to try to get this thing done. And then these big deals, I coached a billion dollar deal for a large insurance company here in the U.S. Uh, I've coached some three and four hundred million dollar opportunities and some smaller ones. And in every case, those same kinds of skills uh, make all the difference. And I tie that back to selling from the heart because a good salesperson, if you're selling from the heart, you know the customer, you know their metrics, you know mm-hmm. their competition, you know who's on the buying committee. You're not selling, you're helping them buy by knowing them so intimately, so well that you are now their trusted strategic advisor. Uh, yeah, I like a I like a word that you used this little bit bit ago, and it was, I believe you used the word mark co-create. Oh, yeah. And, and here, you know, we love the term co-collaborate and a good, you know, a good sales professional is going to co-collaborate. They're going to co-collaborate and I'll, you, I'll even throw in your word co-create with that potential client. So at the end, there's agreement all the way along the way. So that by the time a sales professional gets to a leader and they start sharing the opportunity that sits, that sales professional could go, Hey, you know what, Mark? Through the whole process, I've been co-creating and I've been collaborating along the way with this person, this person, this person. By the way, that person, Daryl, believes we're the best fit and this is the reason why. 
Boy, you're, you're spot on. Uh, I had an experience with a large bank here in the U.S. that is in the mortgage business. And um, there's another company that's, I, I won't tell its name, but it has a, a spacecraft in their logo. And uh, <laughs> as you sit back and think about it, they could originate a mortgage pretty darn fast. And um, this bank that I was working with was not quite as fast and they wanted to be faster. So we were working on a, a, a new process to improve that. We were in a room and the CIO walks in and it was full of architects and uh, the, the business people that take uh, do mortgage origination and a bunch of IBMers and IBMer consultants. And the CIO stopped and he said, I just want to tell you, you ladies and guys, um, what, what really pleases me is that uh, I can't tell who's a, a person from our bank and who's a person from IBM. If you're collaborating and collaborating yeah. so well yeah. together, you are one team. Yeah. And that really pleases yes. me. It's all the good work. Oh, love it. Incredibly powerful. I love this. Mark, this is this I this is a writer downer episode. This is one <laughs> you're gonna down. want to rewind. I got and, my uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. And you sell that pin to us, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is uh, this has been fantastic. And I know uh, our listeners uh, are going, how can I get more Mark Clausen in my life? <laughs> well, I, I tell you the best ways to, uh, number one, I, I write some content for sales managers and sales reps. I, I try to write, write it weekly. Um, I've got nothing for sale. So I'm <laughs> writing this for the benefit of my awesome. 18,000 IBMers that uh, a bunch of them follow me. Um, it was like I went to see the movie Air, you know, about the Nike shoe company. <laughs> I walked out of there and I go, man, there's 10 lessons for sales managers in here. So <laughs> I wrote an article. It's up there under my features section. So awesome. I would count it a privilege for anybody that's watching is to go to LinkedIn and, and find Mark Clausen, Mark with a C M A R C Clausen. You see that on the screen, but uh, I'm sure you'll you'll see it in some of the notes here. Uh, but uh, connect with me and, and follow me and ask me questions. Um, I'd be more than glad to work with you. I've, I've also coached up a bunch of people on their LinkedIn profiles, uh, because if you're not showing up relevant to your customer in a meaningful way mm -hmm. with a great about section and, and, and great content in terms of who you are, I think candidly, Larry and Daryl, Selling from the heart begins with how you show up digitally. Oh, totally. And there's some real value in, in that. I've had people at some companies that I work for that have been selling for 25 years. And in LinkedIn, they don't have one recommendation from an external party and they have never given one. Well, the first thing I do is come look somebody up and say, what do other people say? Forget what they say about themselves. Right. You scroll down. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's some good stuff in there. But uh, they can reach me on LinkedIn. It's probably the best way. Love oh, this it. is good stuff. Thank yeah, you so much for investing your time with us, Mark. I appreciate it. Oh, always a privilege. Uh, love you guys. Love the book. Uh, I've given away a lot of copies to friends. No, thank and, you. Uh, I'll be reaching out and uh, buying more because it's been uh, candidly uh, in, in terms of shaping changed attitudes and behaviors uh, as we move into 2023 and 2024. Uh, I, I think you unlock some some nuggets there to help take people from being sales reps to professional salespeople that have customers solve problems. I love I it. I love you. it. Awesome. Mark, thank you. That was incredible. Yeah, you're, you're very welcome. Uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate yeah. it. So cool. Oh. Larry, what a, what a powerful conversation. Yeah. No, it's just, you know, it just, oh, wow. Where do I even start to unpack what, what Mark had said, but you know, a lot of times what we talk about, and, and I love what you had brought up, Daryl, about the life of a sales leader. It's lonely. So let's oh, just, it, oh. just flip this around. And I would just ask all the sales professionals that are watching us today, serve your sales manager, your sales leader, serve up, pour into them as much as they pour into you. Make life easier for them. Don't make it difficult. And back at our sales leaders as well. You may have sales manager on your business card, but you're actually a leader in sales leaders. This coaching um, aspect and in, in not just being the manager, not just being the chief inspector, yeah. not just being the one who filters the forecasts and reports, but actually one that blocks time off on a consistent basis to coach Mark gave us a grow model. He gave us an outline for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, he gave us a framework to unpack deals themselves. All of that incredibly 
uh, incredibly helpful. So we want to encourage our sales leaders listening in as well. Think of yourself not as a sales manager, but a sales leader with a coaching, a whistle around your <laughs> neck, like that coach, right? That is really helping folks out. Maybe the whistle is not such a great idea. That might bring up the wrong side of coaching. Hey, we've got a phenomenal summer lined up for you. If you have not already liked or subscribed on the platform on which you listen, we invite you to do that. Thank you to everybody who is sharing the podcast and best of all, leaving reviews You're part of a global movement of authenticity right here in the sales profession. You're a Selling from the Heart champion. We appreciate you. we got some exciting things coming up throughout the rest of this summer. And Larry, I'm fired up about the book relaunch on August 15th. It's just right around the corner. And I keep going back. There's, it, I'm at a loss for words sometimes when it comes to talking about the book, but I appreciate everyone. I'm super grateful for the community, everyone who's joined in to bring this movement to the forefront. Let's continue. Please help us and spread this movement and just support our cause as we're here all about bringing sincerity, deep business substance and trust back into the sales profession. That's good. Go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash pre-order to get up $300 in bonuses when you pre-order Selling from the Heart on barnesandnoble.com. Until next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep building trust, coach your team, and most of all, sell from the heart.